Presentation today is entitled Attracting Tomorrow's Investors, How Client Segmentation Power Direct Consumer Acquisition. Thank you for attending this session. My name is Brian McCostrich, and I'm Senior Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer of Aviso Wealth. I wanted to start today's discussion by giving you a little bit of background on who is Aviso Wealth Inc. and the uh, companies that are within our portfolio. Specifically, I wanted to talk about Qtrade and Qtrade Direct Investing. It's our online brokerage platform, and it's the company that partnered with Embryonics Analytics to help us with our <clears throat> direct-to-consumer advertising strategies. Uh, today, I'm going to discuss the challenge that was placed to marketing, what was the problem, what solutions we put in place, and most importantly, what lessons were learned. What are we going to carry forward as we continue to optimize our direct-to-consumer advertising strategies? So first, let's talk a little bit about who is Aviso Wealth. Um, Aviso Wealth officially launched in April 1st of 2018 and brought together the sort of um, market leading solutions across four lines of business. They specifically are Prudential, which offers, offers dealer back office services as well as wealth management services to almost all of Canada's credit unions, approximately 150. NEI Investments um, is a leader in responsible investing and a pioneer in responsible investing in ESG. Qtrade Direct Investing is our online brokerage platform, and Virtual Wealth is our robo-advice platform. And finally, Correspondent and Institutional. Aviso Correspondent Partners, based on assets under administration, is the second largest course, uh, Correspondent and Institutional business in Canada, next to National Bank and ahead of Fidelity and Raymond James. As mentioned, um, we came together on April 1st of 2018 at approximately $55, $56 billion in total assets under administration and management. And in the just over three and a half years that we have been together, we are now well over 100 billion in total assets under administration and management, which represents roughly a 19% compound annual growth rate every year that we've been in operation. Um, as a company, Aviso Wealth is born out of the credit unions and owned by the credit unions. Desjardins, cooperators, and the credit union centrals are our owners. Now, let me talk a little bit about Qtrade, specifically Qtrade Direct Investing. As an online trading platform, Qtrade's brand pomp promise is about confidence and empowerment. Qtrade offers the platform, the research tools, education, and most importantly, award-winning client services that enable our clients, the do-it-yourself investor, to write their own future. With over 20 years of history in the online brokerage business, Qtrade is both a pioneer and an innovator with a long-standing history of being recognized as a top online broker, not just for the platform itself, the trading platform, but again, also for its award-winning client service. And you can see here in the slide, a long-standing award history of being ranked number one 23 times over the past 16 years. And now I wanted to move on to talk about what problem did we face? When I first arrived at Aviso Wealth in, in sort of the second half of 2018, Qtrade as a business primarily focused on enhancements to its platform, the trading platform itself, um, as a way to uh, guide its client acquisition. And they relied almost exclusively on its award-winning status to drive advertising message. Uh, around the second quarter summertime of 2019, Qtrade got a new leader to run the business. And that leader approached the marketing team with a challenge. We were engaged to significantly enhance our direct consumer acquisition through increased advertising spend. To help uh, support Qtrade's growth ambitions, we needed to get a better understanding of our current and potential client base. And believe it or not, up until that point in time and almost 20 years of history for Qtrade as a business, they had not conducted a formal segmentation analysis of their database of clients to understand both who their existing client base is and equally important, um, who their potential clients might be in the marketplace. And as a marketing group, we needed to understand or find ways to break through in what we believed was a highly competitive brokerage industry, and to do so with, with what we also believed were limited marketing budgets, especially relative to the major bank owned and the larger independent uh, brokerage, uh, online brokerage services. So we had to dispel, dispel the myth of the target consumer. And as I mentioned on the previous slide, Qtrade had not engaged in a formal segmentation exercise of its client base. And as a result, there was an internal bias. And that bias was who was our current client and who was our most um, 
potential best client, if you will, that we should be attracting to the platform. No surprises potentially, but the school of thought was this was the millennial investor. However, in a marketplace where our competition was targeting millennial investors, we knew we had to find a way to stand out from the noise, even with uh, limited financial resources at our disposal. Uh, as I've mentioned earlier, Aviso has a long-standing relationship with Canada's credit unions and other strategic partners. And these credit unions are actively referring their credit union members to the Q-Trade platform. But the marketing team understanding the, Q, the credit union membership knew that that membership skewed, on average, older than the average Canadian financial services client. So we were highly skeptical at the time that the primary audience, if you will, that was being referred to the Q-Trade platform by credit unions was the millennial or younger investor. And so we therefore looked to segmentation and we therefore looked to partner with Enveronics uh, Analytics to truly understand our largest and most profitable client segments, to differentiate our marketing efforts, and to drive growth to the Q-Trade business. But then we needed to create a deepened understanding of the client base. So to identify current Q-Trade target audiences and areas of potential growth as well, we look both within our existing client base and the broader Canadian market. We leveraged existing client history with a comprehensive suite of market data using Enveronics analytics on Canada's demographic, psychographic, financial characteristics, channel and competitive preferences. And then using this data, we segmented the entire English Canadian market into 11 distinct segments based on similarities in the clients and markets behaviors. After this, looking at where we have historically done well and where we saw opportunity for future growth, we then prioritized six of the 11 segments for continued and further research. So what did we learn? We found in looking at the top three of our priority segments that over a third of our total clients were there. And importantly, they held over 40% of total accounts under administration, producing 40% of total revenue. These segments were affectionately named affluent advice seekers, comfortable empty nesters, and well-established status seekers. Looking further to the top six priority segments, we see that they capture 70% of total clients, uh, over 75% of total accounts, and over 81% of total revenue. Looking at our clients through the lens of segmentation helped to identify the highest value clients and uncover new audience poise for growth. Given the internal bias I referred to earlier, you can see here that these segments certainly aren't the millennial audience and the importance of moving forward based on data and fact. The client segments also captured life stage and socioeconomic status. Um, Three of our priority segments in particular, as you can see in the top right of the slide here, affluent advice seekers, comfortable empty nesters, and well-established status seekers were found to be in a more established life stage with higher net worth. Whereas on the other hand, two of our priority segments seen on the left, young do-it-yourself traders and kids and mortgages represented younger clients that were more likely to be upwardly mobile and building wealth, however, versus having established wealth. However, segmentation only got us so far. We also uh, needed to understand attitudinal and behavior data to really understand what motivates the segments. And as you can see in this slide, there's a, a number of, of personas here uh, that have been developed for our target groups. By developing in-depth personas, we were able to leverage data such as key social values, entertainment and recreational information, media, internet, and banking highlights, plus much more. The result was complete stories about the priority segments, who they are, how they behave, what they prefer, how they think, and what they value. And perhaps most important was how they consume media and other information, which will lead to where we're going next. Now that we understood who our tar target audiences should be, we needed to understand where to find them. So, Enveronics Analytics detailed persona reports, as you can see here, were combined with client segment market sizing. And this allowed us to better understand where these segments could be found in the Canadian marketplace. Connecting to consumers required a data-driven mindset, and these tools provided by EEA helped to create a consistent, data-centric story around the priority segments. The tools also acted as a blueprint, a blueprint for how we connect with consumers, both from a creative 
as well as a media perspective, representing a truly consumer first approach to our direct to client acquisition strategies. The persona reports also allowed us to identify similar characteristics between our priority segments. We also created a primary audience for our marketing efforts, which was comprised of our highest net worth priority segments. Again, I've referenced these, the top three segments discussed previously, and a secondary audience, which contained our younger, quote unquote, millennial audiences. Digging deeper into their lifestyles and mindsets helped us to understand the preferences and behavioral differences between our core segments, which in turn informed the creative and the media buying process. As an aside, in our most recent advertising campaign, one that launched just in the beginning of September, approximately, approximately excuse me, 80% of our media spend is focused on our primary, primary older audience and approximately 20% on our younger secondary audience. We then moved to the creative process as the next step uh, in our process. And we've recently partnered with a new agency called King Ursa. King Ursa is a full service advertising agency with an emphasis on digital, data-driven execution. And I wanna stress here, every single conversation that we have had with our agency, be it in the onboarding process, um, every campaign that we're doing, it starts and always ends with Enveronics Analytics and the segmentation work, the personas, and the custom target segments. All our efforts uh, start there as a base and end there as a confirmation as we go through all of our direct-to-client acquisition media advertising. As I mentioned earlier, Qtrade's brand promise is about empowerment and confidence. And the segmentation and persona work allowed us to better communicate this message with our different audiences in a manner that best resonates with them. The personas helped us to determine the appropriate tone and voice, copy and creative, design direction for our custom target uh, segments. And in the above example, as you can see, you'll see that we are employing a different creative approach based on our different audiences or two primary target groups. While our brand or graphic identity remains the same and doesn't change uh, across all executions, our choice of model, which is the demographic, as you can see an older model on the left and a younger model on the right, and how we speak to them in terms of body copy is different based on unique audience insights that we have been delivered through the EA work. Then we wanted to layer on other data from Enveronics Analytics, specifically Optics Vivid Data, um, so that we could learn where specific audiences either over index across media consumption um, or under index. And if they over index, it would help us to inform our media plans. And in the example that you're seeing on screen, our primary audience entertains themselves with podcasts, for example, connected TV, and uses the website or apps for sports, food and recipes and home improvements. They stay connected via emails, the news, and current affairs, and they are good at managing money, but are likely to consult a financial advisor. An interesting fact for you as an aside, a recent study in 2021 by Parameter Insights, which actually came out in July of this past year, uh, showed that 45% of Canadians with a full service advice relationship also have an online brokerage account. That means that one out of every two full service advice clients either has or is interested in an online brokerage relationship. Tie that back to the target audiences we are going after. Higher on the socioeconomic scale, they're an older audience, more established with higher net worth, often many of them in full service advice relationships. And it's very important to dispel the myth that if somebody has a full service advice relationship, they may not necessarily be interested in online brokerage. Uh, what we have discovered is that is not necessarily the case. Finally, in terms of our uh, primary audience, we understand that they use social media mainly to share the things they are doing and to follow industry experts and interesting people. We then paired the audience segments with media consumption habits, as you can see on this slide, to ensure we meet our target audiences where they are and improve as much as possible the efficiency of our advertising spend. And in this case, for example, I'll just use two media. Uh, TikTok lends itself well to our secondary, younger audiences, while the likes of TV, as an example, may skew more to our primary older segments. And we were able to look at their media consumption habits to understand which platforms or channels we should overweight or underweight or not use at all, depending on the various target groups we were going after. 
Finally, the results. For Qtrade, the results were very clear. Focusing on our key segments shifted our client mix year over year, and there was an immediate and noticeable difference. And we are now acquiring a much higher net worth client. This has adjusted our position in market share and based on average assets under administration, it has allowed us to, to climb above the major bank's average client AUA in just over a year. Again, we're targeting and attracting a more mature, higher net worth client that is bringing a larger average account size to the Qtrade platform. And the contribution of the direct consumer channel, which is what marketing is fulfilling through its media advertising strategies, in terms of new accounts to the Qtrade platform, and let me describe here both opened accounts and ultimately funded accounts. So we want to know um, through our advertising efforts, are people coming to the platform and opening accounts and then are they ultimately funding and trading those accounts? So for both open and ultimately funded accounts, we grew direct to consumer channel acquisition from 45% to 55% of all new business to the platform in just over a year. And in our opinion, a fairly substantial uh, increase given the short period of time. We were able to dispel the myths about who was our target audience. We were also able to better understand our target audiences and therefore develop a more appealing brand story and increase rates of client retention. We were able to optimize our media strategy by targeting the consumers with the highest propensity for online brokerage services and that we're bringing a larger average asset base to the Qtrade platform. And this allowed us to maximize our media spend through highly targeted campaigns. Again, mentioning that we were operating with much smaller budgets than some of our larger independent and bank owned uh, competitors. And through this process, we've seen a fairly dramatic increase, uh, decrease, sorry, in our cost per acquisition for both funded accounts as well as traded accounts. And we're constantly using data in the process um, to test creative, to test platforms, to optimize our offering in market in order to drive down cost per acquisition. So moving forward, what will we do? What learnings are we bringing? We want to employ test and learn programs targeting specific neighborhoods with a high propensity to purchase using Enveronics Analytics and Vision software. We also want to provide our key partners with Enveronics Analytics data to help them build our collective client base together. Recall that Qtrade has extensive referral relationships with Canada's credit unions and other national partners. The sharing of data allows Qtrade, Qtrade's partners, excuse me, to better identify and target the client groups with the most potential interest in online brokerage, as well as insight into how to deliver that message based on target audience preferences. And finally, now that we understand our existing client base and most profitable potential target audiences, we're gonna sub, uh, sorry, uh, support this information, supplement it, by layering in a marketplace review of competitive media advertising in order to better understand share of voice and to get a better understanding of to whom, where, and from a creative perspective, how our largest online brokerage competitors are advertising. And we believe this will give us even further information to help us differentiate our media advertising programs. Again, I'm repeating ourselves with limited dollars. We truly believe that every, every dollar spent had to be spent based on information and knowledge. We will also test and learn with new audiences. As discussed, we have two audiences, a primary older segment and a secondary millennial younger segment. The secondary younger audience is a relatively new audience for Qtrade. Um, we typically keep a portion of our media spend, call it 15 to 20% to explore new audiences on a continuous basis, as well as new channels and properties uh, for us to potentially go after and optimize our advertising programs as we bring more clients to the platform. So finally, in conclusion, what I'd really like to drive home is where you start your journey really matters. Are your audience, your media and creative decisions grounded in fact or data, or are they based on assumption? And given the extensive competition as I've discussed in the online brokerage industry and on a relative basis, yet again, I'm saying our understanding that we were competing with significantly smaller budgets, we felt we had no choice but to make every decision based on data and we'll continue to do so as we optimize both our media buying and creative execution. And with that, I'll end my presentation and say thank you very much for participating. I'd now like to open the floor to questions and would be happy to answer any questions that you may have.